That's a hard heart, folks. And then the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? I think that's a good question. So Jonah went out of the city, sat on the east side of the city. He couldn't get a quick flight home. He was stuck. And there he made himself a shelter, sat under the shade, till he might see what would, what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a plant. Not exactly sure kind of plant. And he made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head, he is in the desert, to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. Happy, happy guy now. But as the morning dawned, the next day God prepared a worm. God appointed a prophet. God appointed a storm. God appointed a fish. God appointed a plant. God appointed a worm. And it so damaged the plant that it withered. And, and it happened when the sun arose and that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. <laughs> and then he wished death for himself. He's on a roll, isn't he? And he said, it is better for me to die than to live. And here's the message for you and Jonah, for me. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is right for me to be angry, even to death. But the Lord said, you have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh? the great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and much livestock. You know who he's talking about? Who can't discern between their left hand and their right hand? Children. I told you there were 600,000 people there. 120,000 are children. Ask your two-year-old. Put up your right hand. They don't, they don't know. You know what God's saying? You hate this generation. You hate this generation, Jonah. You want to see them wiped out. What about the next generation? What about the children? What have they done? See, God forgives the, of the hardened sinner, and God has hope for the next generation. You know what's wrong with the church today? Many things. One of them is our message has come. That's our message. It's the wrong message. It's the second message. First message of the church is go. And since we live in the third most lost nation on the world, you don't have to go very far. Oh, we're going to go to Sneedville and New Orleans and Honduras and Nicaragua and Peru, Kazakhstan, Russia, Africa. What am I missing? We've been about everywhere. As we send them out, they're, they're expecting us to do it here. This is our Assyria. This is our Nineveh. People need to hear this message. Are you running from God or to God today? How do you respond to God's word? How do you respond to God's will? Some of you, a church our size, I would say some of you are frustrated. You want to know God's will for you in a certain area of life. If you do not obey Him in the clear areas of God's will, He may not reveal to you that His will in the other areas of your life. I, I, I can't speak for Him completely there, because none of us are perfectly in His will. But if you will not obey Him, now I want to know what God wants for my life. So while you're waiting, start witnessing. While you're waiting, start making, encourage believers. Take somebody under your wing. While you're waiting for God's will, find somebody to mentor you. Find somebody you can look up to. Get in a class. Find a group of people that will love. While you're waiting on God's will, do what you know He wants you to do. You know, the, you know why Jonah 
may be one of the greatest books in the Old Testament because Jesus said that his death and resurrection is compared to being in the belly three days. He's speaking of the resurrection of Christ. That's why that happened. Listen, listen to this as we close. Matthew 12, 39 through 41, if you're taking notes. Matthew 12, 39 through 41. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. He's saying that to the religious Jews. And no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment against this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And Jesus says, and indeed, someone greater than Jonah is here. God wants to bring revival. Let's pray.